Hey folks, if you're not up to date on all of our recent Pack T videos, let me take a moment to catch you up. Number one, what is Pack T? Pack T is precision, accuracy, consistency, and terminal performance. And this season or this series, we're testing a bunch more handgun bullets and principally focusing on the 9mm Luger or 9x19. And what we're doing is a single elimination tournament style challenge. And in our first video we pitted the 65 grain Novex bullet against the SNB 100 grain XRG. Both kind of light bullets for the 9mm. The winner S&B's XRG bullet with a score of 430 points to 240 points. Now, arguably, the 115 grain is kind of, at least currently, the standard weight for a 9mm uh, bullet. And in our second video, we tested the 115 grain Barnes TAC XPD against the slightly heavier 125 grain Honey Badger by Black Hills Ammunition. The winner was a clear win for the Barnes Bullet, 412 points to about 260 points. And by the way, if you'd like to catch up and watch the entire video of all these uh, challenges and competitions between these bullets, just go to the description and look for the Pack T playlist in that uh, list available to you right there. Our next video tested two heavyweight bullets, the 147 grain Buffalo Bore and the 175, uh, 147 grain Spear Gold Dot G2 bullet. Now going into this, I'd say that the Buffalo Boar definitely came in as an underdog to the U.S. SOCOM's choice bullet, and that is that Spear Gold Dot G2. And I thought it was going to be a clear win for the Gold Dot. The Gold Dot is kind of legendary for its terminal performance, but also known to clog as it goes through soft barriers. And uh, that is the improvement of the G2 bullet. Well, the underdog came through and upset the G2 with a score of 270 points to a score of 170 points. And that completed our first go-round in this tournament. And today, we're going to the second stage of this Pack t testing. And we're going to be putting head-to-head uh, -head the S&B 100 grain XRG against the 115 grain Barnes TAC XPD. Now what's different about this test compared to the previous test is number one, it's harder. And that's sort of a play on words. It's more difficult, but it's also harder because they're going to be facing a hard barrier. Previously, dealt with soft barriers. Now we're going into the hard barrier part of the test. And that hard barrier test is going to start off with a section of an old Carhartt jacket of mine, that Carhartt canvas or cotton duck uh, with a blanket lining. Then a layer of corrugated cardboard sandwiching in, and here's the hard barrier, Formica. Formica laminate. Now this is interesting. It's some thin stuff, but the density of Formica laminate is very, very high. In fact, it is about, and this is interesting, it's about the same density as bone. And so I started using this some years ago for my hard, some of my hard barrier tests. What I'm doing is I'm taking a number of these, uh, or purchasing uh, a number of these Formica sheets, cutting them all to size, and then sandwiching those in between that corrugated cardboard, so there's a little bit of thickness there. Then, 
we have the layer of that formica and then another layer of thin cardboard all epoxied in there together nice and tight and it has in the past proven to be a pretty difficult hard barrier test for lots of the bullets that I've tested it in. Lots of the bullets fail to expand, clog, etc, etc. So that's what we're doing today. I'm ready to head out to the range to do this test. We're going to dispense with the precision, accuracy, and consistency part. We did it already. I don't expect the same exact box of bullets to change that much. We're going to jump right into the ballistic gelatin test. And then when we finish shooting those, doing a little bit of field measurements and observations, we're going to head right back in and take a really close look at how these bullets did and see who wins today's competition. Barnes or S&B's XRG. Well, the bullets both made it through. XRG ended up penetrating a little bit more. There it is. I'll call it about 14 inches. I think that's what it did pretty much last time in the barns, more or less. Maybe it's 12 and a half. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time being too particular on the measurements here just because I'm going to get an exact measurement back at the house course we're going to dig these out, weigh them, measure them in all different ways and see which one uh, scored better. Now we do notice that both of them expanded. That is excellent. They made it through the hard barrier, the soft barrier, and the hard barrier. No problems whatsoever. And uh, now the question is which one ends up scoring better and wins this go-round. Let me begin by saying that both of these bullets actually did a really good job today and we finally have a real competition going, I would say. There are differences between these two bullets and how they performed and there are differences in lots of different things and that brings up a topic I wanted to address. I think I have to address this every year. That is that when you're shooting a ballistic performance test, we are, we, I'm using clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. It's called 20% NATO block in contrast to a 10% FBI block. In contrast to natural gelatin, the old stuff that used to be used. Oh, I used that stuff years ago. It is not really, really good. Lots of restrictions on how you can use it, certain temperatures and all this good stuff like this. Anyway, don't get me going on that. The results that we're going to talk about today, all of my tests that have all used 20% ballistic gelatin, and I'm getting around or over 100 bullets being tested at this point, every one of those um, can be compared one to another. I'm using the same medium. They cannot be compared apples to apples to 10% synthetic gelatin, and they cannot be compared to the natural gelatin. But all of those, all of those are good test mediums, just like there are lots of different bad guys out there with all different builds and musculatures, there's different testing mediums. So, let's go ahead and proceed to talk about the results that we're getting, or we got, today. I'm going to begin and we're going to walk through this in the same order that we shot those. And that is, we'll start with the S&B XRG Defense 100 grain bullet. Penetration a little bit more than the first time that we shot this bullet. 
14 inches of penetration, 100% weight retention, it was 99.9 .9 grains on the scale, and a retained length of 0 0.427. That's that core or shank of the bullet. 205% expansion on this bullet. It really did a good job. We really like to see more than 200% uh, expansion. It did a really, really nice job. Now let's take a look, go back to this table, let's take a look at the Barnes bullet. Remember this was a 115 grain bullet and it penetrated 12.13 inches, 12 and an eighth roughly. Uh, retained weight again, 100%. Retained length a little bit longer on that core, that shank, about half an inch there. And very, very similar expansion 202%. That is this bullet right here. It looks, in fact, both of these bullets look so similar to our previous tests with these things. And once again, they really did perform quite well. Now, the Barnes bullet has a couple of things going for it. One, it has more mass, more mass on that particular bullet. In other words, 115 grains versus 100 grain. And actually, based on the testing protocol, the penetration from the Barnes bullet is better, considered better, than what we saw with the uh, S&B XRG bullet. Now you might be thinking, well hold on, no, no, no. The XRG penetrated 14 inches and the Barnes um, penetrated a little over 12 inches. So clearly, the S&B is better. No, that's not the case. Um, the idea is that we're starting to get a little bit too much penetration. It might over penetrate in a real world scenario when we get that much penetration. Um, but I'm simply following the protocol we have always been using, which is a modified FBI protocol. And as it turns out, it's a little bit more penetration than the ideal that we'd like to see. I should also note that while I was out at the range and I started getting ready to pack away this uh, gel block, I lifted it up. It was so interesting because I had this powder, this fragments of formica, formica debris all over the face of that uh, gelatin block. Really interesting to see that. So those bullets powered, powered through that gel block uh, and uh, kind of powdered the formica as a result. The temporary wound channels were also very similar. But since we have to choose one, the better bullet is the Barnes TAC XPD. It scored 437.5 points in contrast to the 405 points scored by the S&B XRG bullet. Now what's interesting is both of these made it into our prestigious 400 club. And it's kind of too bad that a 400 club bullet gets beat out by another, well, another even better 400 club bullet. And really when it comes down to it, if you choose the lighter 100 grain XRG bullet, I can't fault you for that. Boy, these are really both quite good bullets. What's up next? Well, we're gonna go into the hard barrier test, identical test to what we did today, but two different bullets. I'm gonna be shooting the 147 grain Buffalo Bore. That's another traditional bullet, lead core mushrooming type of bullet. Well, it's supposed to mushroom versus the big heavy hitter, the legendary Federal HST 124 grain plus P bullet. Now that bullet has done so well in so many of our tests. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how it does up against this 147 grain buffalo bore. Again, coming in as an underdog on this one. We'll see how it all plays out. Say, if you've got some questions or comments, ideas, go ahead and post those into the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching.